Hello and welcome dear students. Today we are going to discuss chromosomal theory of inheritance. The main objectives of today's module are to know about the genesis of chromosome theory of inheritance, to know about the independent assortment, to know about the relation between Mendel's laws and chromosomal transmission, to know about the chromosomal segregation, and finally, to know about the reality of Mendel's laws of inheritance. Dear students, let's start with the introduction. Chromosomes are a thread-like structures of nucleic acids and proteins located within the nucleus of the living cells and are mainly involved in carrying genetic information in the form of genes. The chromosomal theory of inheritance was given by Bowery and Sutton in the early 1900s. It is the fundamental theory of genetics. According to this theory, genes are the units of heredity and are found in the chromosomes. Chromosomal theory of inheritance came into existence long after Mendelian genetics. Dear students, let's discuss the genesis of chromosome theory of inheritance. Scientists are always searching for the best explanation of a problem. And in search of that, scientists put forth their ideas and principles which are debated in scientific circles in the form of papers in peer-reviewed journals. In 1919, the page of the Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences journal presented a heated debate between the laboratories of researchers of W. E. Castell and T. H. Morgan. Castell argued that Morgan and colleagues' assumptions regarding the organization of genes along a chromosome were absurd while Morgan's laboratory suggested that Castell's counter-argument could not be taken seriously. Though both scientists used data to support their views and ideas, only one of them turned out to be correct. By the time of Castell versus Morgan debate in 1919, the chromosome theory of inheritance was generally accepted as a reasonable explanation for how traits are physically transmitted from parents to offsprings. The chromosome theory was introduced by W.S. Sutton and confirmed by Nettie Stevens and E.B. Wilson. This theory was then widely advocated and publicized by Wilson in a series of letters to the journal Science. However, Morgan resisted the chromosome theory for many years and he publicly argued in a series of letters to journals that there were not enough facts to support chromosomes as the sole carrier of heritable traits. In this debate between Castell and Morgan's labs, there were clearly some misunderstandings about the data. However, Castell's criticisms forced Morgan and his colleagues for better describe their data and perform important experiments to clarify their hypothesis. Moreover, their response to Castell's dispute of the linear hypothesis illustrates some fundamental scientific lessons, including one, that one should be wary when comparing data from two completely independent experiments. In order to verify the relationship between multiple variables, all variables need to be tested in the same experiment. Since the 1919 debates, the concept of linear arrangement along the strands of DNA has held up over other models. Even though chromosomes are highly compacted due to supercoiling at the level of DNA, genes are arranged linearly. Nearly 100 years after Stuart's early work, new techniques in gene mapping have emerged that permit antisense fluorescent tagging at specific gene locations with imaging evidence. These images supplement crossing over data in the quest to physically map genetic relationships on chromosomes. 
though techniques in genetic analysis have advanced in great leaps since the debate between Morgan and Castle, the type of dispute these men had over a biological model is still commonplace within the page of scientific journals. Dear students, let's now discuss the chromosomal theory of inheritance. The chromosome theory of inheritance was actually not the work of a single scientist, but rather the collaborative result of multiple researchers working over multiple decades across the globe. The seeds of this theory were first planted in 1860 when Gregor Mendel and Charles Darwin each proposed possible system of heredity. It wasn't until several decades later following Walter Fleming's discovery of chromosomes and description of their behavior during mitosis that a probable mechanism for the transmission of traits was identified. The idea of a connection between chromosomes and heredity was subsequently strengthened by research conducted by Theodore Bowery and Walter Sutton. But direct evidence in support of chromosome theory didn't come until Thomas Hunt Morgan's experiments with fruit flies, that is the Drosophila, at dawn of the 20th century. Thus, after nearly 50 years of speculation, scientists were finally able to confirm that they had long suspected that chromosomes were indeed the physical carriers of heredity information. When Gregor Mendel began studying heredity in 1843, chromosomes had not yet been observed under a microscope. Only with better microscopes and techniques during the late 1800s could cell biologists begin to stain and observe subcellular structures, seeing what they did during cell divisions, that is mitosis and meiosis. Eventually, some scientists began to study Mendel's long ignored work and reevaluate his model in terms of the behavior of chromosomes. Around the turn of the 20th century, the biology community started to make the first tentative connections between chromosomes, meiosis, and the inheritance of genes. In 1902 and 1903, Sutton and Bowery published independent papers proposing what we now call the chromosome theory of inheritance. This theory states that individual genes are found at specific locations on a particular chromosome and that the behavior of chromosomes during meiosis can explain why genes are inherited according to Mendel's laws. It is the fundamental theory of genetics. According to this theory, genes are the units of heredity and are found in the chromosomes. Several independent advances, namely discovery of chromosomes and their behavior during mitosis as described by Fleming and discovery of the link between chromosomes and heredity are described by Theodore Bowery began to shed light on the events that take place in the nucleus during cell division and their implications. Then some 35 years later, the significance of Mendel's work was emphasized by Walter Sutton, whose observations of chromosome behavior during cell division and gamete formation were consistent with Mendel's findings. Thus, the basis for chromosome theory and the field of cytogenetics was born. By the middle of the 19th century, scientists understood that cells derived from other cells and that the hereditary information was located in the nucleus, but the physical nature of the hereditary material remained unknown. The microscopes of the time provided very poor resolution of living cellular structures, making it necessary for investigators to treat fixed cells with various stains to enhance the contrast of their contents. Thus, using innovative microscope techniques and painstaking precision, German anatomist Walter Fleming recognized and explored the fibrous network within the nucleus, which he termed chromatin or stainable material. Fleming had actually discovered the chromosome. Fleming noted that during cell division, the chromatin formed thread-like bodies, which he termed mitosin from the Greek word for thread. 
based on many observations of cells in various stages of division, Fleming correctly deduced the sequence of chromosome movements during mitosis, which were confirmed decades later by microscopy of live dividing cells. With his characteristic attention to detail, Fleming also made the important observation that chromosomes split along their length during mitosis and the correctly hypothesized that the split chromosomes were partitioned into different daughter cells at the end of mitosis, that is the cell division. Thus, Fleming recognized that chromosomal movements during mitosis offered a mechanism for the precise distribution of nuclear material during cell division. His work provided an invaluable description of the initial mechanisms underlying the process of cell division and it helped paved the way for the discovery of heredity mechanisms. The chromosome theory of inheritance was proposed before there was any direct evidence that traits were carried on chromosomes and it was controversial at first. In the end, it was confirmed through the work of genetist T. H. Morgan and his students who studied the genetics of fruit flies, that is the Drosophila melanogaster. Dear students, let's now discuss Theodor Bovary links chromosomes and heredity. The end of the 19th century was marked by advancements in cytological techniques and microscopy. During this period, German embryologist Theodor Bovary took Fleming's findings to the next level by providing the first evidence that chromosome of germline cell lineage provide continuity between generations. Bowery found evidence for this hypothesis through his research of early development in the roundworm species Ascaris megalocephala, now known as Paracaris equorum. Ascaris embryos provided an excellent experimental model for Bowery's observations. This is because the large career cells of the Ascaris embryo have only two pairs of chromosomes and the embryos develop distinct somatic cell and germ cell lineages during the first few cleavage divisions. Bowery was thus able to trace the fate of the chromosomes in individual cell lineages with great precision and he made the surprising observations that the full complement of chromosomes was retained only in the Ascaris germ cell lineage, the source of future gametes. By contrast, the chromosomes in somatic cells, the source of all other adult tissues, underwent a curious process of fragmentation and elimination known as chromosome diminution. Chromosome diminution does not occur in mammals. Bowery also recognized that chromosome number was reduced in the gametes. In Ascaris, meiosis does not occur until fertilization is complete in the eggs. So Bowery was able to observe the behavior of eggs and sperm chromosomes following fertilization. He noted that Ascaris eggs retained only two chromosomes after the polar body formed and that the normal number of four chromosomes was restored following fusion of the sperm and the egg pronuclei. Bowery's work provided one of the first descriptions of meiosis. Sutton postulated that all chromosomes have a stable structure or individuality that is maintained between generations and he used this property to follow the behavior of individual chromosomes through the various stages of meiosis including synapses. Most notably, Sutton recognized that his observations were consistent with the other recently discovered findings. In fact, Sutton closed his 1902 paper with the statement, I may finally call attention to the probability that the association of paternal and maternal chromosomes in peers and their subsequent separation during the reducing division as indicated above may constitute the 
physical basis of the Mendelian law of heredity. With these words, Sutton articulated the chromosomal theory of inheritance. Sutton documented the fact that each homologous pair of chromosomes consists of one maternal chromosome and one paternal chromosome, showing that these pairs segregate independently into gametes in meiosis. He concluded that this process is the biological basis for Mendel's principles of heredity. Despite compelling correlations between the behavior of chromosomes during meiosis and Mendel's abstract laws, the chromosomal theory of inheritance was proposed long before there was any direct evidence that traits were carried on chromosomes. It was only after several years of carrying out crosses with the fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster that Thomas Hunt Morgan provided experimental evidence to support the chromosomal theory of inheritance. Morgan's crucial chromosome theory verifying experiments began when he found a mutation in a gene affecting fly eye color. This mutation made a fly's eyes white rather than their normal red. Unexpectedly, Morgan found that the eye color gene was inherited in different patterns by male and female flies. Male flies have an X and a Y chromosome, while female flies have two X chromosomes. It didn't take Morgan long to realize that the eye color gene was being inherited in the same pattern as the X chromosome. In 1910, Thomas Hunt Morgan started his work with Drosophila melanogaster, a fruit fly. He chose fruit flies because they can be cultured easily, are present in large numbers, have a short generation time, and have only four pairs of chromosomes that can be easily identified under the microscope. They have three pairs of autosomes and a pair of sex chromosomes. At that time, he already knew that X and Y have to do with gender. He used normal flies with red eyes and mutated flies with the white eyes and crossbred them. In flies, the wild type eye color is red, that is XW, and is dominant to white eye color, that is XW. He was able to conclude that the gene for eye color was on the X chromosome. This trait was thus determined to be X-linked and was the first X-linked trait to be identified. Males are said to be hemizygous in that they have only one allele for an X-linked characteristic. Salient features in support of chromosomal theory of inheritance are that the link between one generation and the next is through male and female gametes, that is sperms and eggs. The two must carry all genetic heredity traits or characters. Both the gametes contribute equally in the heredity of the offspring. The male gamete, that is sperm, provides only its nucleus to the female gamete, that is the egg. Hence, it follows the hereditary characters are controlled by nuclear materials. Fusion of male and female gametes takes place during fertilization process. Nucleus possesses chromosomes, hence chromosomes must carry the heredity traits. Loss of a complete or a part of a chromosome produces structural and functional deficiencies in the organism. Like the heredity traits, the chromosomes retain their number, structure and individuality throughout the life of an organism and from generation to generation. The two neither get lost or mixed up. They behave as units, both chromosomes as well as genes, that is Mendelian factors, occur in pairs in the somatic or diploid cells. A gamete contains only one chromosome of a type and only one of the two alleles of a trait. The paired condition of both chromosomes as well as Mendelian factors is restored during fertilization process. Genetic homogeneity and heterogeneity dominance and recessiveness can be predicted by chromosomal type and behavior. Homologous chromosomes undergo synapsis 
during meiosis and then separate or segregate independently into different cells which establish the quantitative basis for segregation and independent assortment of heredity factors. In many organisms, sex of an individual is determined by specific chromosomes called the sex chromosomes. Biochemical studies reveal that hereditary units that is genes are composed of DNA in eukaryotes and RNA in some prokaryotes. The major amount of DNA is found in chromosomes proves beyond doubt that chromosomes are the carriers of hereditary units, what we call genes. Dear students, let us now discuss the chromosomal theory, linkage and genetic recombination. Morgan observed that while crossing a set of characters, two genes did not segregate as per Mendel's law. If two genes were present on the same chromosome, the probability of getting a parental combination was much higher in the next generation compared to the non-parental combination. This physical association of genes was termed as linkage. The term genetic recombination described the non-parental gene combinations in a dihybrid cross. Once linked genes were discovered, the frequency of linked genes also influence the appearance of traits in the next generation. A student of Morgan, Stuart, discovered the position of linked genes on a chromosome by calculating their frequency of genetic recombination by the process of gene mapping. This method of generating a link map was extensively used during the Human Genome Project which started in 1990s and sequenced the complete human genome in 2003. Dear students, let us discuss the observations of chromosomal theory of inheritance. Chromosome contain the genetic material that is genes that is transmitted from parent to the offsprings. Chromosomes are replicated and passed along generation after generation from parent to the offspring. The nuclei of most eukaryotic cells contain chromosomes that are found in homologous pairs. That is, they are deployed in nature. One member of each pair is inherited from the mother, the other from the father. At meiosis, that is reduction division, one of the two members of each pair segregate or separate into one daughter nucleus and the other segregates into different daughter nucleus. Therefore, gametes contain one set of chromosomes that is they are haploid rather than the diploid. This process mirrors segregation of alleles into gametes in Mendel's law of segregation. During gamete formation, different types of chromosomes segregate independently of each other just like the alleles of different genes in Mendel's laws of independent assortment. Each parent contributes one set of complete chromosome to its offspring, even though female that is the egg and male sperm gametes differ in their size and morphology, they have the same number of chromosomes submitting equal genetic contributions from each parent that is the mother and father. The gametic chromosomes fuse during fertilization to produce offspring with the same number of chromosomes as their parent that is the haploid number is restored to diploid after the process of fertilization. Observations that support the chromosome theory of inheritance include that chromosomes like Mendel's genes come in match that is homologous pairs in an organism. For both genes and chromosomes, one member of the pair comes from mother and one from the father. The members of a homologous pair separate in meiosis. So each sperm or egg receives just one member. This process mirrors segregation of alleles into gametes in Mendel's law of segregation. The members of different chromosome pair are sorted into gametes independently of one another in meiosis just like the alleles of different genes in Mendel's law of independent assortment. 
Hence, the chromosome theory of inheritance describes the relationship between Mendel's laws and chromosomal transmission. Dear students, it was all about today's lecture regarding chromosome theory of inheritance. Hope you have understood it well. See you next time with a new topic. Till then, take care and goodbye.